And as interest rate rises bite and cost of living pressures intensify around the country, many young business people are still courageously out there on the front foot. One of them is Joshua Mason, the owner of Hatted French restaurant Qua in Sydney. He's a busy man and it's great to have him in the studio this morning. How are you, Josh? Good. Thanks, Tim. Thanks Why for is it Qua? Why Qua? Mate, um, working in Michelin star restaurants, it was a name that was loosely thrown around in the kitchen. Uh, it was an interesting name. And uh, every time we say the word qua, there's usually a follow-up conversation from that going, what is qua? Which you can dive into a conversation after that. So, um, and obviously the Q was a great brand icon. And it is what, isn't it? It is. It is. Je me sais quoi. Yeah, yeah, what is that? Yeah, what? What is that? Yeah. Now, um, how is it out there at the moment? In Mate, it's, it's pretty rough. Um, we are seeing a, a big decline um, on the numbers on both sides. So we've got a negative impact on both ends. We've got an impact of customer headcount is down. And we've also got customer spend is down as well, which is a pretty dangerous place to be in for a lot of hospitality ventures right now. And that's obviously on the back of 12 interest rate rises, cost of living pressures. Yep, absolutely. So it has got uh, worse over time and you can you can definitely see that it is tightening up with, and especially with the, um, the cost of produce hasn't really moved as well as we'd want it to at, in this point in time in the market right now. So what do you do? What do I do? I have to control what's going on in the restaurant, watch our costs and watch our staff costs and get ready to pivot at any time. Yeah, well, pivot, nimble, they're all words that people mm. got sick of, <laughs> didn't they, during COVID, but that's exactly what they need to do now. Uh, and we're looking at some pictures at uh, your, your, your wonderful restaurant probably. here. You, you, you probably carry 12 staff on any given night. One of the things I find interesting and, and you know, it's very encouraging, a lot of these staff are very young. They are. And I think it's really important that young people today have a taste of hospitality because there's no better, um, I'd say, start-up for a young person and to be in the middle of 60 or 70 customers, reading body language, learning to communicate and problem-solve on the spot. I think it's important for young people to engage in hospitality quite early. What ages are we talking? Um, the youngest would be uh, 16 years old as a pot wash yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we go all the way up to about 27. So yeah. it is a young team, dynamic team, and a fun team. But how old are you? I'm um, 29. 29. <laughs> so how did it all? We're start? all young. Yeah, yeah, which is great. How did it all start for you? Uh, family business from a very young age, and I guess it just kind of grew from there. Um, did play a lot of rugby league, so I'm a massive sports fan. And uh, I just flicked the switch one day and went, you know what? I'm going to give 100% hospitality and travel the world and competed on an Australian level and and all the rest of it, so it was quite good. What do you see as the, the most important elements of running a small business and a successful business? Because you've got a lot of plates in the air, so to speak. Yep. You, you work in your restaurant, obviously. You've got other ventures. Yep. Make your own wine. Absolutely. So I think, for me, it's having the right people around you to help control the situation. So I have the right accountant, we have the right law people, we have the right bookkeeper around us at all times to be able to pivot and be able to help where they can. So for me, it's about having the correct control in any process moving forward. So especially with the wine business um, and the hospitality business, it's all about cost and numbers. And, uh, and obviously a great product as well. So we have to balance both of them together in a very difficult marketplace, which we don't know where it's going to go right now. Do you think government does enough for small business? Do, does, no. Do, they don't incentivise enough? Definitely not, and definitely not in hospitality, especially where cost of uh, food is right now. It is still at a global record high at the moment in Australia. And what about our restaurant industry when you look around the world? Obviously, obviously, people focus on Melbourne and Sydney, our two biggest cities. Yep. Well, the good thing about Australia is that we are very multicultural, so we do have an amazing dining flair with our flavour and creativity. The difference with overseas is that the payment structure with staff is very different. They're on an incentive scheme overseas, where I worked a lot of time in America, where the harder you work and the more you do, the more you get incentivised, where here, anyone with very little experience can walk into a restaurant and get paid pretty well straight off the bat. So it's up to people like myself and my manager to put them through vigorous training before they even talk to a customer to try and maintain our reputation. And, and staff is an interesting thing because we went through that period of time when no one could get anyone. And uh, you were telling me before, you've got yeah. a million resumes. It's well, insane, a million, yeah. I, you know, it's insane. I've been told not to exaggerate. <laughs> yeah. So 
It's quite hard. Um, we, we went through a, an insane busy time mm. from, um, from COVID all the way up to last year when interest rates started and we were desperate for staff. And I don't know one business owner in hospitality who said we're OK with staff. Everyone was crying the same tune. Right now, I have so many resumes in my email box, I can't fulfil them. We don't, have, we don't have the work for them. Yeah, and how do you see it going forward? What do you think the short-term future looks like? To be honest, I'd love to know. I'd love to have the crystal ball, yeah. but I just don't know. I think every month we wait patiently on the first Tuesday, sitting at home at around 11 o'clock going, what's going to happen with interest rates? And how do I pivot the rest of my month? Do I put another special out there? How do I communicate with my customers? Um, it, it's going to be a very tricky situation for the next, I think, eight months potentially. How important is it to stay positive, to stay upbeat, to keep an attitude of can do rather than I might not do that? Well, for me, I, I look at it on two point of views. Um, personally, I have to make sure that my headspace is in the right game. So I actually base my life around what my day looks like from when I wake up in the morning to when I get to work. So I want to walk into work with my staff really upbeat. You know, that may start at the gym, going for a walk or whatever it is, but it always starts with exercise before I go to work. So I do have the, the possibility to go into work really happy and upbeat and have the creative juices flowing. So I, I've got, you know, potentially something I'm ready to put on my staff going, OK, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And they get enlightened by that. So do you still love to cook? I do. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's 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 always going to be my first and foremost passion. And I guess wine has now become my second, um, which I absolutely love. The, the Barossa region in South Australia, it's an yeah. amazing place. Me too. Um, but cooking um, would always be my number one. And have you got any spare tables tonight? If anyone's watching tonight that wants to go and have a, a lovely meal in the in the hills area, of we do. We do have some spare tables. So uh, jump onto uh, quietdining.com and we'll uh, we'll sort you out for sure. I'll be there. Thanks for coming on the program. Hey, Jarvis. Thanks, Tim. Good on your job.